The perimeter system was developed in the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War. It was a complex of automatic control for a massive retaliatory nuclear strike, whose task was to guarantee a nuclear strike against the enemy even if all communication lines and command posts were destroyed in Western Europe and the United States. The Soviet perimeter system was assigned the code name Dead Hand. Since the creation of nuclear weapons of incredible power, the principles of conducting a global war began to be revised. It became quite obvious that one missile with a nuclear warhead was capable of destroying a command center or bunker where the highest leadership was located. Furthermore, Soviet military officials were very concerned about the so-called decapitating strike by the United States, the essence of which was to deliver a preemptive first strike in order to destabilize the military and civilian structure of the enemy. It was precisely because of these concerns that the perimeter system was created. It is a complex and large mechanism concentrated throughout the territory of the Soviet Union, controlling several thousand nuclear warheads. The second reason for starting the development of the perimeter system was the understanding that electronic warfare means would develop and reach a level at which they could disable the channels of control for strategic nuclear forces. Therefore, there was a need for an alternative communication method that could give the command to launch all intercontinental nuclear missile launchers regardless of the events. It was then that Soviet developers came up with the idea of using special command missiles filled with powerful radio transmitting equipment as such a connection. While in the air, the rocket could transmit commands to launch nuclear missiles at command posts and directly to launchers. In August 1974, the Soviet government issued a resolution to create such a rocket, and the KB Yuznoy, which was involved in the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles, was tasked with its implementation. The warhead of the rocket with radio transmitting equipment was developed at the Leningrad Polytechnic Institute. In 1979, the new rocket was tested for the first time, demonstrating the full interaction of all components of the perimeter system. The command missile maintained the specified trajectory at an altitude of 4 kilometers using an autonomous system with a quantum hero and an automatic gyroscope. Launched in the area of Polotsk, the rocket was able to successfully transmit a command to a shaft launch installation located near Baikonur and activate the launch of the R-36M missile, classified as Satan by NATO, which successfully hit its target at the Kara missile range on the Kamchatka Peninsula. In 1985, the perimeter system was put on combat duty. The following conditions had to be met to activate the perimeter system, a potential enemy launched a mass nuclear strike from the air, sea, and land on the territory of the Soviet Union. Then, missile attack warning systems would send an alarm signal to the defense control center. From there, the signal would be transmitted to the nuclear briefcase of the chief of the general staff of the armed forces, who would then send the signal to the Supreme Commander-in-Chief, who would press the so-called red button, activating the country's entire nuclear potential for a retaliatory strike. However, this situation was only theoretical, and in practice, events could have gone differently. The Soviet air defense did not shoot down all of the enemy's intercontinental ballistic missiles, and some of them reached their targets, destroying the General Staff and Ministry of Defense Command Centers, military district control points, aviation and naval bases, and missile positions. A strike was carried out on cities where defense industry facilities were located. The entire territory of the Soviet Union was paralyzed, and it seemed that no one else was capable of managing the situation. It is in this case that the perimeter system is activated, delivering a massive retaliatory nuclear strike on the enemy's territory. The dead hand was fully automated, with command and control systems based on artificial intelligence. Analyzing information, it made its own decision on launching command missiles. Mobile and stationary centers of the system monitored radiation levels, air temperature, seismic activity, electromagnetic ionizing radiation practically throughout the territory of the Soviet Union. In the event of seismic activity, it could indicate the occurrence of nuclear strikes. Furthermore, the system monitored military frequencies, recording the number of conversations and radio exchanges. After collecting and analyzing a huge amount of information, the system made a decision on the retaliatory nuclear strike. Before activating the retaliatory strike, the system checked for four conditions. 
First, sensors analyzed signs of nuclear strikes throughout the country. Second, the system connected with the general staff. If there was no response, the third condition was checked, and the perimeter system was activated. If there was still no response, the perimeter system connected with command bunkers, where surviving decision makers could be located. In the event of silence, the system began to activate the retaliatory nuclear strike. There was a second use for the perimeter system, as soon as the country's military leadership received information about the launch of ballistic missiles from the territory of other countries, the perimeter system was put on special combat alert. If after a certain period of time the system was not removed from this alert state, it meant that the country's leadership and senior military command were no longer present. In this case, the perimeter system began to activate all remaining nuclear warheads for a retaliatory strike. During the Cold War, the United States created an analog of the Soviet perimeter system, which was codenamed Tsarzer. It was already put into service in 1961. The American system consisted of special aircraft that were turned into airborne command centers. Eleven of these planes were constantly in the air on combat duty. They alternately flew over areas of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The operators on board the planes monitored the situation and had access to the control of the strategic nuclear forces. If all ground command centers were destroyed in a nuclear attack, the operators would activate the commands to carry out a retaliatory strike. The Cold War was accompanied by a race in nuclear armaments and repeatedly created conditions for the outbreak of a Third World War. One of such cases was the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. The collapse of the Soviet Union weakened international tension and seemed to put a final end to the Cold War.